At some point, we will probably switch to a single piece casting. <clears throat> I think we need to get the Texas factory and the Berlin factory going, kind of re redo the factory without blowing up the cash flow of the company. Right. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I'm really fascinated by the path that Tesla is on in terms of technology for its vehicles. We're seeing this with Model Y and we're gonna see it continue. And with the Gigafactories, there were some hints in Elon Musk's interview with Sandy Monroe that gave a little bit more away. And I didn't notice it at first, but I've been stewing on it. And I wanted to see what you think of it. So I'm gonna tell you what I think and I'm gonna ask you to let me know what you think in the comments below. Before I get started, I wanna thank the Vasa Law Firm in Sweden and all my Patreon supporters for helping this channel grow. Patreon supporters get early access to videos, they get t-shirt discounts and other benefits. We have kind of a discussion on Patreon that we don't have elsewhere. Speaking of t-shirts, check out the link below, elonbits.com, it's in the video description for t-shirts, like this t-shirt. Elon, be less wrong, this is one of the best selling t-shirts on elonbits.com, very popular. Machine that builds the machine is another popular shirt. I've got some new shirts, please check it out. So let's talk about Tesla's technology path going forward with vehicles and gigafactories. Are you ready? Let's go. Way better to have a single piece casting. And then you don't have any gaps, no sealant. You don't have dissimilar metals. Reduce the size of the body shop dramatically. Just having the, the rear body castings for Model Y reduce the, the body shop by 30%. Yeah. So there's, a, there's roughly a thousand robots uh, on the Model 3 body line. We, we got rid of 300 robots. Uh, just with that rear body casting. Yeah. And then we're, we're, when we go to the front body casting, we're getting rid of another 300 robots. There's a progression going on here for Tesla. They had the Model 3, which was a step ahead of where Model S was before in terms of manufacturability, in terms of being able to manufacture this in mass production. Because Model S and Model X are produced in relatively low volumes. Model 3 is produced in much higher volumes. But as they're going... They're coming up with ways of improving manufacturing and you get better processes, better ways of making vehicles that cost less money, use less parts, use less machines. With Model 3, they had this relatively complicated way of building the vehicle and they discovered they could simplify it a lot and take the rear section of the vehicle and make it as one piece, a one piece casting. And it saves like 300 parts and eliminates like 300 robots. And that's a big improvement from Model 3 to the current Model Y. The next step, they're gonna take the same improvement they did to the rear of the vehicle and they're gonna move it to the front of the vehicle and do a single piece casting on the front. That's another improvement we're gonna see with Model Y, eliminating another 300 robots. So they're going from 1,000 robots with Model 3 to 600 robots with the Fremont Model Y and now the Berlin and the Texas Model Ys are going to knock another 300 robots off. They're going to be down to 400 robots. That's a lot less capital that you have to spend in putting together your factory. It saves you a lot of money in terms of the cost of setting up your factory, and it improves the speed that you can produce things. It improves the quality as well. So that's one step in the process of moving from this big mess of a whole bunch of parts you put together to reducing it to piece, piece, and then what goes in the middle and putting it all together and it makes for a much more efficient manufacturing of a vehicle which means you save money and the vehicle drives better and it's more efficient it has all kinds of advantages i want to be clear about the importance of capital expenditures if you can save a billion dollars in setting up your factory and let's say you're going to make 10 million cars in that factory a billion dollars divided by 10 million cars saves you a hundred dollars a car that's fundamentally what's going on. Every time you make a saving, you can save money on the cost of the car. And that's just the capital expenditure saving. That doesn't count the speed with which you produce things, the reduced amount of energy it takes, the, the reduced amount of labor that it takes. Just the capital expenditure alone saves you $100 a car. And then you spread that out over so many other things that you do and you're just saving more money. And that allows Tesla to deliver more cars for less money that are better quality to customers. And that's the type of thing that helps Tesla move up. And it sounds like it's not a lot, $100 a car, but you add up $100 here, $100 there, and $300 there, and pretty soon you're saving a few thousand dollars a car. And that's where the difference comes in. The savings on batteries saves a ton of money. All of these things come together to make Tesla much more competitive. 
I'm very disappointed. I thought I was going to see a single piece casting in a Model 3 as well. I thought you were going to shoot the two and then glue it together, but that's all right. I mean, I, at some point we will we'll getting over probably it. switch to a single piece casting. <clears throat> I think we need to get the probably the Texas factory and the Berlin factory going. Um, yeah. And uh, like we just need, we need a like we do have an issue of like it's it's hard to change the wheels on the bus when it's going 80 miles an hour down the highway. Yeah, yeah. We, we we just need basically an opportunity to um, <clears throat> kind of re redo the factory without blowing up the cash flow of the company. Right. I see people talking all the time about where's the next Gigafactory going to be, and I think this was a little bit of an unintentional reveal by Elon that they're going to finish. Berlin and Texas first, or at least make a lot of progress on them. And then the next Gigafactory is going to be the next stage in the transition to more efficient vehicles. So Berlin and Texas are going to produce front casting, rear casting, and structural battery pack in the middle, which we'll talk about in a minute. But down the road, the next vehicle, which I think is the 2023 Tesla Compact that they hinted at at Battery Day, that is going to be one whole casting. One big machine, one big gigapress, casts the entire chassis of the car with space for structural battery pack to go in there. And that is going to reduce the cost even more. It's going to reduce the number of robots even more. It's going to reduce the amount of labor, all these other things. But that's coming down the road. So first, we got to get Berlin up and running. Then we got to get Texas up and running with those two running at full steam because it's going to take. 12 to 18, 24 months to ramp to full production. Once they're on that path and they see where that's going, it can head to the next generation of manufacturing, which isn't that far away, going out to 2023. And that's going to enable much higher volume production of a much lower cost vehicle. And that will further make the EV revolution take over and get rid of ICE vehicles. Next, listen to how Elon talks about how Berlin and Texas Model Y will be made. Are you going to have three castings then or just uh, two? Well, effectively, there'll be um, a rear casting, a front casting, and then the center will be a structural pack. Yeah. We're going to transfer shear through the cans of the, of the, the cells, of the cells um, and just do, you know, shear transfer, which is, gives you a super stiff, great moment of inertia. And so getting dual use of the, the cells, and, like, so, so the cells become structure. Um, and that's like what I, the point I was trying to make at the, um, the battery drive presentation. But I think a lot of people didn't quite understand why that's such an important thing. The cells today in every car are carried like a sack of potatoes. Exactly. They, have, they, they actually have negative uh, structural value. Because um, not only do they need to be, not only do they, they don't serve to um, aid in the structure of the car, and they, um, they have to be isolated from the rest, you know, from the rest of the car. So it's isolated from, you know, vibration and shock loads and that kind of thing. So, so then you've got to put mass into isolating the, the, the cells because otherwise they'll, they'll bang against the side of the, the, the factory casing and that's, right. that's not good. By essentially bonding the cells in there um, and w where the bonding foam uh, serves as both um, a, a, an adhesive and a, a, a fire retardant. Yeah. Basically, you get, you get you know, two birds with one stone. So this is where we're heading this year. Front piece of the vehicle, rear piece of the vehicle, structural battery pack in the middle, putting them all together dramatically reduces the number of robots, the amount of labor, the number of parts, reduces the potential for parts coming together in different ways and creating problems for the vehicle, radically reduces weight, radically improves the vehicle's performance, all kinds of advantages. And this is coming really, really soon. This is middle of this year. We're going to see this dramatic improvement in Model Y coming out of Berlin and Texas. Lower cost to manufacture, better vehicle. Listen in particular here to how Elon describes the advantages of structural battery pack. Like, well, let's show you. Uh, yeah. You know, this is what happens if you've got just a little floppy sheet, yeah. um, or, or you just have like a limited number of uh, stringers for shear transfer. Yeah. You can see it's like, it's still, it's quite bendy. Yeah. Um, but as soon as you have a whole bunch of, of cans or honeycomb or anything like that, and you bond an upper lower face sheet, it gets crazy yeah. stiff. Like you can't right. bend, like you can just put them together and like one thing's floppy and the other thing's right. stiff as hell. Um, and that's really what you want. Like the torsional rigidity will be much better. And so if you're like tr you're trying to improve like the, 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 the ride and feel of the car, you say like, w you know, w what's, the, what's the frequency of this car? Is it like a, like a sort of real bendy spring or, or is it like tight? 
Um, and that feeling of like, is this car tight? What really, you, if people don't understand, why does this car feel better than the other cars? Like, well, because you're, you've got, your natural frequency is high and you've got good torsional rigidity. And then another factor is like, what is your problem moment of inertia? So like basically to what degree is like the mass grouped towards the center as opposed to spread out towards the, the outside? Like you can see this like with like an ice skater where um, if the ice skater uh, holds arms out, it, you rotate slowly, brings mm -hmm. arms in, rotate right. fast. Right. That's, what polar, that's, that's what's meant by polar moment of inertia. Exactly. So it's like, can you rotate this car fast? Uh, you can if you bring the mass to the center. The advantages of structural battery pack are huge. And Elon laid it out there. I think it's a little hard to understand for a lot of people, but in short, it makes the vehicle more stiff. The stiffness allows the vehicle to handle things better. It just feels better. Better torsional rigidity. Those two things make the vehicle handle better, make the vehicle more comfortable for the driver and the passengers. And then you've got the polar moment of inertia. What they're saying is in a current Tesla, the, the pack is nearly as wide as the car. Because of the way they're designing structural battery pack, because of the ability to squeeze things together and using less hardware to make it, they're able to bring the battery mass in towards the center of the car. And that improves what we call polar moment of inertia, which allows the car to turn more effectively. It, it, ma it makes it easier for the car to turn. It means the car can turn quicker. It means the car does better in handling. And this is gonna matter a lot for performance for people who like driving performance vehicles in particular. But in general, these improvements in the vehicle make the vehicle feel better to ride in and better to drive. And one more benefit of structural battery pack is weight, which Elon talked about earlier. So now you're reducing the weight of the vehicle and that also improves handling and it also improves vehicle efficiency, which means you're able to get more miles on the same amount of battery capacity. Or it means you're able to reduce the amount of batteries you need in the car in order to achieve the range that you want. We've already seen that with the long range Model S that was just announced, they dropped 300 pounds from that vehicle. And that doesn't include single piece castings or structural battery pack. So Model Y with structural battery pack and a front casting is probably gonna drop 500 pounds of weight. This thing is gonna be incredibly light for the vehicle that it is. And this is just gonna be magic. This, the way this vehicle is going to perform is going to be insane, the way it's going to feel. And then the manufacturing cost in the long run is going to be lower. And this leads to one of the questions that I had going forward. How does Tesla manage which factories to use for which vehicles and what to sell when starting in roughly July of this year, they're going to have a new version of the Model Y that is going to be radically better than the current version of the Model Y. And I want to be clear, the current version of Model Y is arguably the best car in the world already. They're gonna take it and they're gonna make it radically better. So when you're shopping for a Model Y, you're gonna want the new one. So they're gonna to have to charge more for the new one. So my impression, and this is, this is where I was looking for your comments, what I think is going to happen going forward is once the new Model Y starts rolling out of Giga Texas and Giga Berlin, the Model Y that comes out of those factories is gonna be a premium model. It's gonna be a high performance Model Y. They're going to sell it for $10,000 or more higher price than the price they're charging for the Fremont and Shanghai Model Y. Even though it may actually cost less to make the Berlin and Texas Model Y, but initially they won't be producing them in high volume. So I think the initial version of the Model Y coming out of Giga Texas and Giga Berlin will be some kind of high-end model that will have 400 miles of range and outrageous performance. And yeah, you're gonna pay a premium for that vehicle. It's gonna be all wheel drive. It's gonna have all the great features. And the Fremont Model Y will be lower. They may even drop the price of the Fremont Model Y and the Shanghai Model Y. So now you have this period of time as Giga Texas and Giga Berlin are ramping up, as they're getting their production. Initially, maybe they'll only produce 50,000 vehicles in 2021. But in 2022, they're gonna scale and they're gonna produce 500,000 vehicles each, maybe from those two factories. And at a certain point, I think what has to happen is Tesla has to say, you know what? It's time for us to shut down the Model Y line in Fremont and reconfigure it, just like they did with Model S and Model X recently. They shut down the line for a few weeks, they, pull, they move in the new equipment, they bring the, the workers back in to figure out, okay, here's how we're gonna do things going forward. And now there's probably a six week to two or three month delay 
where they're not making vehicles in Fremont so that they can catch it up to the production methods that are happening in Texas. So there's going to be this window of time where you can buy an older generation Model Y, which, like I said, is currently one of the best vehicles in the world. You'll be able to buy that and maybe even get a discount on that. And then there's going to be this window of time when the only vehicles coming out will be from Giga Texas. And then they'll produce lower priced vehicles from Giga Texas until Fremont is up and running. And the long run plan, as I understand it, is Fremont serves the West Coast and Texas serves the middle of the country and the East Coast. But there's this transition period where I think there's a challenge. And that's what I'm wondering. What do you think? How does Tesla handle the transition? I think that's what it is. When they get Giga Texas up to producing enough volume, maybe not the full ramp, but close to the full ramp, they shut down Fremont for two, three months to revamp the line and get it up to speed. And now they're producing even more. And then once they're both producing up to speed, once Fremont and Texas, once Shanghai and Berlin are producing up to full speed, they fully ramped all of them, then the price of the Model Y is going to drop significantly. And that takes us into 2023. And 2023 is where we're going to see the new factories. And along the way, they also have to transition Model 3. Model 3 is still made without the rear casting. So Model 3 is going to transition from a vehicle that is still that agglomeration of parts that takes a lot of robots and a lot of labor to that will move to front and rear casting, structural battery pack, dramatically lower the cost of making the Model 3. And at some point they're going to shut down. Maybe they're going to start producing Model 3s in Texas and then shut down Fremont for the changeover once Model 3 is produced in volume in Texas. Same thing with Berlin. As they scale Berlin Model 3, then maybe they can shut down Shanghai Model 3 and revamp the Shanghai Model 3. And there's a third theory here that I'm working on, which is I think Tesla is going to need another factory in China. I think that we're going to see an announcement of a second gigafactory in China somewhere outside of Shanghai, maybe in the middle of the country, maybe near Chongqing, in cent more, more towards the center of China, because the Chinese car market is bigger than the U.S. car market. So there's room for Tesla to produce a lot more vehicles in China in terms of the marketplace. And I don't think Giga Shanghai is ever going to have the capacity to produce the same volume of vehicles. They need a Berlin or Texas style Giga factory in China. So maybe they build another Giga factory for threes and Ys in China, or maybe that's where the first 2023 Tesla compact factory is going to be is somewhere in China. So that's another question. How does it transition from Model 3s and Ys? You know, how does the Model 3 transition happen? And how does it transition from 3s and Ys to this much higher volume vehicle, the Tesla compact, that is going to be $25,000 or less, and is going to be a fully capable robo taxi? And will that new compact finally incorporate the new FSD chip, the new generation FSD chip, with higher definition cameras to radically improve self-driving yet again. Self-driving is already going to be amazing, but take it to the next level where there's never an accident. And maybe it's able to drive faster. And, and especially with all these other features and all these other advantages, the way the vehicles are made, it may improve handling so much the vehicle will be able to perform better and get people where they want to go quicker. Still want to keep them comfortable. You don't want a lot of G-forces on the passenger in a, who's riding in a, in a ride share. There's a lot of potential here, and I'm just curious what you think. How does this transition go? Because it's going to happen really fast, right? We're in 2021 now. We're going to get to July of 2021, and they're going to start rolling vehicles out of Berlin. And then maybe August or September, they're going to start rolling vehicles out of Giga Texas. And we get into 2022, and they're going to ramp. And then we're going to, at some point, Model 3 has to transition. At some point, Fremont and Shanghai have to transition. And then at some point in 2023, we start to see the new gigafactories producing the Tesla Compact. This stuff is going to happen really fast. It's going to come at us like a ton of bricks. And at the same time, they're going to be scaling production of the 4680 cell lines. And you've got Semi and you've got all these other things. I'm going to do a separate video about the market for Tesla Semi. All this is going on, all this great stuff. And it's that rapid pace of innovation and the challenge of how you do the transition from one stage of innovation, one stage of manufacturing engineering to the next stage. All this is going to come together. It's going to be really exciting. So how do you see these technology transitions occurring? Please let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, check out my other videos. Please check out the shirts. ElonBits.com for the shirts. Support this channel on Patreon.
Of course, please subscribe to this channel. And thank you so much for watching.